what are your thoughts on jury nullification? I do not agree with it. The answer to that is, and I know this will not go well with some of my libertarian friends, the answer is be, be careful what you ask for. Almost always when you talk about jury nullification, which by the way means that a judge can instruct the jury that if you don't agree with the law, you don't have to follow it. I do not like that idea. On the other hand, juries do have the ability of nullification. If a jury finds somebody not guilty for whatever reason, that ends it, that's okay. I am not going to instruct a jury about that. And the reason is, say you have someone who is charged with wife beating, okay. So am I going to instruct some form of old crusty type that, okay, you know, if you don't like the law, you don't have to enforce it. Well, you know, she just, he, she kind of mouthed off to him. So he slapped her around a little bit. That's okay. Is that what you want to have happen? The answer to me is no. If there's bad law, then change the law, like the marijuana laws. But I will not instruct a jury because of just that. Be careful what you ask for. I know it's not something people have thought of. I've been in this system for a long time. Be careful of what you ask for. So a, so a jury should just convict a weed smoker if the judge tells them to? A judge never will tell them to. Flat out wrong. Flat, it should not ever happen. That's an ethical violation. The judge well, yeah. will instruct the jury on what the law is. They'll say, look, if you find that, that, if you believe he smoked that joint, you find him guilty. Tell me that's not something a judge would say. The judge would say if, the, if it is marijuana and if you find that it was in such and such a person's possession or if he was under the influence or whatever, and that's a violation of law, he wouldn't get that specific with regard to the facts. But yes, the judge would instruct that this is a violation of law. If you find beyond a reasonable doubt that these are the elements that they possessed, that they used, that they knew it was marijuana. Yes, they would. And if that's the juror said, but I think this law is wrong, I'm going to say not guilty. What would the judge yeah. say then? Well, a judge would say that you swore to follow the law, but a judge is not in the jury room and the, the juror would be able to say that under these circumstances. I think the, judge, the, they, the jurors have the right to nullify the, the, the offense. That's a protection of the, of the jury system. I wholeheartedly agree with it. The only difference with regard to jury nullification is do you want the judge to instruct them that if they don't agree with the law, that they don't have to follow it? You know, the answer to me for Judge Jim Gray is no, be careful what you ask for. So you're Did specifying you between the the judge instructing and then the actual action of nullification. So if I'm outside of a courthouse and I'm handing out pamphlets and I'm saying, you know, there is a I'm aware of a uh, a, a, a criminal case going on here wherein somebody is, uh, you know, on trial for just the crime of possessing marijuana. I think this is wrong. I, you know, want to educate people about nullification, not necessarily, you know, ju uh, jury tampering or, or whatever. Um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is that still a misuse of nullification? Is that proper application of nullification? Would you still be against that? Okay. Uh, again, it depends. If you're on the court property, I would, I would keep you off the court property doing that because now you're undermining the system of justice. If you're going to do it on private property, bless you. If you want to write yeah. an editorial, bless you. That's fine. So that's so just- it, So it undermines the, the judicial process if there's yes. pamphleting going on on the courthouse grounds, like out that's front correct. of the door? That's, that's the distinction that I would draw, yes. I mean, you're gonna allow people right outside the- So you would have those pamphleteers arrested if you were the judge at that I courthouse? Ask, well, of course, the judge isn't gonna be asked, but uh, I would ask- Well, he would send I, the sheriff's department or the, uh, you know, whoever, but they the judges would give the order and then they would, and then they would arrest it. Is that, would that be the correct course of action in your opinion? Uh, if they were acting in violation, because there are laws saying you cannot, you cannot, tamper with juries and that's 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 an offense and i think that's an appropriate offense and if you're doing it on court property that is a violation of law i would ask them to leave to, to desist if they didn't desist then i guess they would have to be given a citation if they still didn't leave then i'd probably have them arrested yes i would what would the citation be for citation would be you're in violation of the law at least in california i don't know what other states do but in california jury tampering is a violation of law and if you are trying to poison the law the for one way or the other ask it the other way hey somebody is by is is smoking marijuana which is a devil weed convict them 
you, I'm not going to allow them to pass those things out either. You're tampering. Well, well jury. jury nullification uh, pamphlets typically don't say convict or don't convict. They they give factual information, which I think you just agreed is factually correct. If someone isn't saying, look, here's here's what a juror can do and gives it to everybody on court property, you believe that person should be arrested? Yes. If you're going to push it that far, the answer to you is yes. If they're disobeying the law intentionally on court property to 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 get involved and tamper with a jury, regardless How is that tampering with the jury, I'm just curious. Okay. We're, we're speaking, spending time in this okay. going around in circles. Okay. If you want to spend your time on it, I just disagree with you on that. I think okay. what I have is the practical, right, lawful approach. I don't believe in tampering with juries. And I'm That's, just the same thing as saying marijuana is an evil thing. Anybody with marijuana should be convicted. I don't want them to pass those things out either. That's fair. Do you do you think that, um, like, I guess with court property, would you run into any First Amendment um, uh, pushback on that with it being public property? Or is that like, uh, you know, fair game as far as, you know, you guys are interfering with this trial uh, you, you can go to the sidewalk outside, but, you know, not on courthouse grounds. I don't know where that line is on. The Life is complicated. I mean, you yeah. heard it here. I would tell you that if you're on court property, that means you're in the court and the court should be able to control what happens within the court. If you're All going right. to go across the street, fine. Yeah, because you, you see that a lot. You'll see protesters at, at trials like in the street, you know, they're maybe not on the courthouse steps, but they're like on the sidewalk with pickets or whatever, you know, saying to convict or right. They're acquit. not in the they're okay. not in the courtroom. They're at the they're on the sidewalk in front I've of the courthouse. I have answered your question. OK, yeah. I have answered your question. Let's go back to the south. Let's go back to Jim Crow laws. You're going to have some people who are going to try to influence a jury to convict a black man because he's he's a black man. He's a, he, I mean, what am I supposed to say? I do not want that to happen. I do not want people artificially to interfere with the justice system on court property. I do not. And I hope you eventually come to the same conclusion. Yeah, let's let's try a different uh, subject. Yes, Judge Gray, uh, you might be sick of uh, sick of this topic here, but uh, we're going to talk about jury nullification again. Right. I just want to just want to get this cr crystal clear. So you've stated, I think, pretty clearly uh, that you're in favor of and you support jury nullification. Um, where the confusion on on my end, and I want this to be clear to delegates, is it, it sounded like um, as a judge that you would not inform. Uh, jurors of uh, of jury nullification, or that you have the opinion that that no judge should really be doing it. So my question would be: Is, is this accurate, first of all? And if that is your thinking, could you just uh, provide some some clarity and some uh, some details as to why? Sure. Well, John, life is complicated. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but you heard it here first. Yes, I believe in jury, jury nullification. A jury has an absolute right, thankfully, to stand as a buttress between over-prosecution and the rest of us. Jury finds somebody not guilty. That's it. No appeal. End of story. But yes, as a judge, you do not want me to instruct a jury that the laws don't matter. And, you know, you can get into lynchings, you can get into wife abuse, you can get, you name it. So we need to have an orderly process. We need to have justice. And somebody that interferes with that justice is simply harming people. It, it's, a, it's a violation of their rights. So, yes, I don't think that a judge should tell the jurors that they should not violate, that they should not follow the law, that laws don't matter. So that is my experience. I'm not, I've been not misquoted on that. I made one mistake one time on one podcast, but I've been speaking that way for, for years. Most judges who are close to the justice system understand that, and I think most people should as well. So the next question is from uh, Mr. Adam Kokesh. Thank you, CJ. So, Jim, Judge Gray, I, I hate to go back to this, because it is a bit of an esoteric issue, but it is pretty significant thinking if, if you're the nominee, if you take the position that an, or an activist uh, using First Amendment rights because they're on a courthouse grounds, uh, th that you would use the excuse, I think, of jury tampering to arrest them, even if they're not actually saying anything about a particular case. And I don't think you really answered the question in the debate last night with the Libertarian Party of Kentucky. I've done this before. I have gone and, and 
done protests on courthouse grounds and said, like, I have a right to be here. If I have a right to be here, I have a right to express myself here. And as a libertarian, I'm concerned that if you're the nominee, I'm going to have to apologize for a position like that, which it comes down to you would you would arrest people for expressing themselves somewhere right. they have a right to be. So is, is that really the case? Well, Adam, as, as you know, at least I, I think you know, life is complicated. We, we have problems. We have to make decisions. I made a mistake, by the way, on that podcast where I was asked the question, do I support jury nullification? And I immediately went to the second part of the question without, and I actually thought until they played it back for me, that I had answered the first part. I do favor jury nullification. I believe that that's a really important buttress between over prosecutions and the people. It's a civilian control over the government. Hooray for that. And if a jury finds a defendant not guilty, end of discussion, no appeal, it's over. Okay. Now, the second part of jury nullification was, should I as a judge instruct the jury that the laws don't matter? Well, you know, I'm not prepared to do that. And I, the example I use is, okay, what if you have somebody charged with wife beating? And you have some crusty old fellow on the jury saying, oh, well, you know, she mouthed off to her husband. He slapped her around a little bit. Ah, no big deal. And the judge instructs that you, the laws don't matter. That's not what we want. It results in injustices. So now the question you asked is more First Amendment. And again, it's problem. Let's say that you're now in my courtroom and the jury is on the stand and you come in, which you have every right to be there, you into the courtroom and say, hey, I know this guy. He's really a good guy. You don't want to convict him that undercuts the entire system of justice. It ends up so somebody else yells louder that before the jury. It's called jury tampering. It's not a something, it's an offense. It's a crime, and it should be, and I stand on that. You don't want to bribe jurors. You don't want to throw in the various things into jurors, make it a shouting match. So we need a judicial process. I was a judge for 25 years. This is the position I take. So now instead of being inside my courtroom, maybe you're out in the hallway, petitioning the jurors while they're coming into the room? The answer is no. It's the same problem. I, maybe some people like it. Maybe they don't. But this is my position, and I'll stand with it. And so will pretty much every judge. So that's kind of where we are. It's a question of degree. You can write all the op-ed pieces you want. You can petition across the, uh, across the street, but not inside the courthouse grounds. That's my position, and I'll stand on it. I think it's valid. All right, Mr. Kokesh, you have a rebuttal. You have one minute, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a minute here because I, I think this is still kind of avoiding the question when you go into the courtroom and you say talking about a specific case. Yeah, that's that's jury tampering. I, I, I agree that there's a problem with that or even interfering with that process. But you would say that on courthouse grounds where it's outside, where they're not talking about the case, where they're just talking about nullification, that you would arrest them. And then would you have instructed anyone as a judge, even in cases where you thought the law was unjust and you wanted that to happen, you wanted that to be expressed? And this comes down again to the ethical thing, no victim, no crime. And I would give you the last 15 seconds here to say, would, would you pardon everybody that you can as president for victimless crimes? Well, you don't have many victimless crimes in the federal system, but, but the answer is I would look at all of these issues. I would take a commission to look on a case-by-case -case basis on every case. People felt they were factually innocent. We'd look into those. It's an outrage. People were over, sent, sent much too much time in prison. You would commute. And yes, I would pardon them as well. But, but at any rate, it's a question of degree, Adam, where inside the court, courtroom, outside in the hallway, down the hallway, where do you draw the line? And I would draw the line on court property. It's a defined line, and it also values people's right, First Amendment rights. Life is complicated, Mr. Kokesh. I'm <laughs> sorry.